What's up YouTube? My name is Will here from Bag Riders and today we're going to be talking about common air ride problems that you could experience. So for one, we're going to talk about loose lock collars. Two, we're going to talk about tire to air spring or bag clearance. And lastly, the big one, we're going to talk about topping out. So this right here is a lock collar and you can actually hear it. So the purpose of the lock collar in the case of the lower lock collar here is to prevent the lower mount from your shocks or struts from being able to move up and down on the threads. And there's two ways that a lock collar could relate to making an unwanted noise. For one, the lock collar itself has a little play and that can make a noise or without it being there to lock against your lower mount and really keep your lower mount perfectly still, the lower mount itself could move up and down. So either one of those is actually quite easy to solve. If you grab your handy spanner wrench, I personally like to put a little masking tape on there to protect it. You can very easily go ahead and tighten down your lock collar, go for a drive and see if the noise has been resolved. So the next common air ride issue is relatively easy to avoid. Let's get into that. So say you've got your build up on jack stands or your mechanic does, and what you're doing is you're gonna verify your wheel fitment. You've got your air ride on, your car can go all the way down, and you wanna take the time to actuate that suspension upward and really get that perfect offset dialed in. Make sure you've selected the right tire size and you're gonna be dialing in your camber to get that look exactly how you want it. This is of course the perfect time to check your tire to bag clearance, something that's very important, otherwise you'll end up damaging your air springs. So say you do that, everything's great, and you're able to complete your project and get it back out onto the road and enjoy it for a season, that's wonderful. But let's say a year goes by and you change your tire setup, or maybe you wanna go from having say stretch to having a meaty tire, there's some important steps you need to take with this change. And it's actually a big mistake I made about 12 years ago with my own E92. I brought it down to Ocean City uh, for the show down there. And I actually swapped from my Michelins to my R888s while I was down there. And although they were a very similar size, the R888 ran a whole lot wider. And I didn't think to really get it on a lift or onto jack stands and make proper verification. So, Immediately, I went to drive to a photo shoot with some friends and found out the hard way that my tires were rubbing against my air springs. They quickly rubbed through, they damaged the air springs, the car was unable to drive, and now I was a long way from home having to deal with all of that. This is a problem you can easily avoid if you don't make the same mistake as me. You need to take the time to verify the clearance there. And we also have made a past video that goes into what clearance you're wanting to look for. So go check this past video out if you want some pointers or a visual aid into what to look for. So I've saved the most difficult concept for last, which is topping out. It's the most complex to understand. So if you're an air ride beginner, please bear with me. So topping out is just what it sounds like. It's reaching a physical limitation of your suspension itself. And it is very specific to air ride and it really doesn't apply to coilovers. It does apply to pre-runner and desert race truck builds, but let's totally leave them out of it for now. Unlike a coilover suspension, with an air suspension, while you drive around, you can determine a choice of a wide variety of different heights. And the thing that makes that determination is gonna be the height of your bag and how much air is in your bag. So the boys over at Airlift were kind enough to provide us with this cool cutaway strut with an ability to look inside at what's happening within the damper. And you can pretty easily see what it looks like when we're at full extension within and full compression. So again, this nuance is very much specific to a car that's driving around on air ride. It really doesn't apply if you're on coilovers. Now, can you hear the sound of hitting that physical limitation of maximum extension? If you don't know how to recognize that sound of topping out, you could be going around for days, if not months, while doing damage to your suspension. If you have too much air within your air springs, you could be topping out. And that's not to say you can't go to full height when you wanna get over an obstacle in the road. That's not a problem for short-term use. But if you're actually setting up your system, so having so much pressure within your air springs that your dampers have zero extension remaining, you're gonna do damage and you're gonna notice two things. For one, the ride quality is gonna be terrible. And for two, you're gonna get that terrible topping out noise. And this is even on roads with very few imperfections. 
So we here at Bag Riders also operate our in-house suspension brand, Super Low Suspension. And from time to time, we receive warranty products back from customers for us to check out, verify, and ensure they're working properly. Now, in the case of ones that are no longer working properly, there is one issue that is far and away the culprit in the vast majority of these cases, and that issue is topping out, especially continued topping out. Now, the part inside a damper that goes bad if you are topping out is this little bump stop right here. This is an upper bump stop, so it's on the side of maxing out your extension. If that bump stop gets flattened, you will have a very bad experience, and I urge you to take better care of your suspension and really to understand what topping out is. This is not a wear item. It's not gonna flatten itself out all on its own, and if you take the time to understand and operate your suspension as you should, it will last a long, long time. So whether you're on bags or on coilovers, one thing that every suspension needs is available travel for both compressing and for rebounding while you're at ride height. So one remedy, if you are finding that you're topping out, is gonna to be to simply decrease the pressure in your air springs. And as you might imagine, doing this will also decrease your overall ride height. If you're hearing that telltale sound, but you're unable to decrease your ride height because your wheels and tires will contact your fenders or you have some other reason why you don't wanna reduce your ride height, there is another option. I've actually made this other video to educate you on adjusting and dialing in your threaded body lengths of your dampers. So please go watch that. Topping out continuously over and over again will definitely damage your suspension. It will cause it to ultimately fail prematurely and you're gonna have a bad experience. If you want more information on any of these subjects, I encourage you to reach out to the original trusted mechanic who did your install or give us a call and hit up Bag Riders right on the tech line. We'd be happy to help you. And if you're already here and you're not having any of these issues, I'm proud of you. Again, my name is Will here at Bag Riders. Catch you on the next one.